I now call on the representative of Armenia. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm taking the floor in response to the statement delivered by Azerbaijan in reply to the statement of the Foreign Minister of Armenia. Mr. President, last week our region has been once again engulfed in a new wave of violence with a catastrophic humanitarian toll as a result of yet another aggression by Azerbaijan, which is now trying to justify its use of force. On September 19, right before the start of the general debate of the UN General Assembly, Azerbaijan launched an all-out attack against the people of Nagorno-Karabakh, resulting in hundreds of casualties, including civilians and children. As a result of the actions of Azerbaijan, tens of thousands of people have been displaced, left with no roof over their heads, with lack of food, water, sanitation. This attack was premeditated, well-planned, and was preceded by a massive buildup of Azerbaijani armed forces along the entirety of Nagorno-Karabakh, as well as on the Armenian-Azerbaijani borders. As well as the heavy disinformation campaign, like the ones we witnessed before Azerbaijan's aggression against Nagorno-Karabakh in 2020 and Azerbaijan's aggression against Armenia in 2022. We heard the main narratives of this disinformation campaign just now and also in the statement of the Foreign Minister of Azerbaijan. Against the backdrop of brutal, senseless, and completely unjustifiable use of force that the indigenous Armenian population of Nagorno-Karabakh had to withstand yet again, Azerbaijan uses the platform of the General Assembly to frame its aggression as so-called counter-terror operation. The images of thousands of displaced civilians, women and children, who are forced to leave their homeland come to prove the level of cynicism of Azerbaijani propaganda. For all the talk about provocation, threats, or any other pretexts Azerbaijan has been trying to fabricate to justify its use of force, the fact remains that Azerbaijan has been a serial violator of all norms of international humanitarian law and international human rights law. As to the distorted and manipulative comments by Azerbaijan of the legally binding orders of the International Court of Justice, I must point out that on 6 July 2023, the International Court of Justice unanimously reaffirmed the provisional measure indicated in its order of 22 February 2023, recalling Azerbaijan's international legal ob obligation to take all measures at its disposal to ensure unimpeded movement of persons, vehicles, and cargo along the Lachin Corridor in both directions. This provisional measure regarding the Lachin Corridor, added to the earlier order indicating provisional measures issued by the International Court of Justice against Azerbaijan in December 2021, which related to the protection of the Armenians held in captivity by Azerbaijan, preservation of Armenian cultural heritage, and prevention of the incitement of racial hatred and discrimination, including at the level of officials and public institutions in Azerbaijan. Mr. President, after 10 month long blockade of the Lachin Corridor and forced starvation imposed on the people of Nagorno-Karabakh, the latest full-scale aggression by Azerbaijan, carried out with indiscriminate shelling of civilians and encirclement of civilian settlements, clearly demonstrate that the tactics of Azerbaijan are to terrorize the Nagorno-Karabakh population and deprive them from the right to live freely and in dignity in their own homeland. Indeed, the actions of Azerbaijan leave no doubt that there are acute risks of atrocity crimes against the population of Nagorno-Karabakh. These risks have been stressed also in a statement of the Special Advisor of the UN Secretary General on the Prevention of Genocide issued last week. Now, when Azerbaijan has once again resorted to use of force against the people of Nagorno-Karabakh, when the civilians are forcefully displaced from their homes, when we witness not an intent but a clear and irrefutable evidence of policy of ethnic cleansing and mass atrocities, the United Nations and the international community must act to hold the perpetrator to account. I thank you.